Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Do Your Part, a set of episodes that is looking at the challenges that young people face and some of the tools that we can give you in order for you to reform your character and to make a positive impression on society. In today's episode, insha'Allah ta'ala, we're talking about being patient and being thankful. And these are two things that are critical in the life of every single Muslim and you never go through a single situation in your life except that you need one of these two things. Let's put that into context by looking at a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said, how amazing is the situation of the believer and this is for no one except the believer. So he begins by telling us how amazing the situation of a believer is and that this is only for the one who is a believer. And when you hear this description, you're going to hear that nobody is going to achieve this except for the one who is guided by the belief of Islam. If he is struck with a calamity, he is patient and he is rewarded for that patience. And if he is given a blessing, he is thankful and he is rewarded for being thankful. So we see that a believer is in one of two situations. Either you're in a situation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you with a trial or with some kind of hardship or some kind of affliction. And we have to remember that trials are in things that are both good and bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that he tests us with the good and with the evil as a trial. So just like Poverty is a trial, and just like sickness is a trial, and just like hardship is a trial, so is being rich a trial, and so is being healthy a trial, and so is living a life of ease a trial. But at the end of the day, those afflictions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, and we all have them throughout our lives. Maybe it's sickness, maybe it's a struggle you're going through, maybe it's the pressure of friends, Maybe it's the pressure of parents, all things that insha'Allah ta'ala we're going to talk about in this series of episodes. All of these kinds of adversity and all of these kinds of problems are in need of patience. Flip the other side, look at the other side of the coin and see a person who is given a great deal of ease. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon you. And you're in a situation where you're comfortable, you're in good health, you don't have any major problems, you're sleeping well at night, then this requires you to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so as a Muslim, you're always going to be between these two areas, between these two situations, balancing yourself on this tight rope between being patient and between being grateful and thankful to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that he has given you. So let's look at patience to begin with. There are three kinds of patience that I'm going to talk about today with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first kind of patience is being patient in doing good deeds because doing good deeds requires you to be patient. It's not easy to perform your five daily prayers every single day. Add on top of that. It's not easy for you to perform your five daily prayers every single day in the masjid. On top of that, it's not easy for you to perform your five daily prayers in the masjid along with the optional prayers that you've been asked to do. On top of that, add in the night prayer, add in a duha prayer in the mid-morning, add in all of the other things that you've been required and, or you've been recommended to do as a Muslim. And you find that it's not easy. It requires patience. You know, sometimes non-Muslims look at us and they say, how do you pray five times a day? How do you possibly manage to give up that much time of your day? And for us as Muslims, it's quite easy. We don't find it as difficult as people might think. But my point is that good deeds require patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a little bit about this in the Quran, in many places in the Quran. But just to give you one example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ 
وما بينهما فاعبده واصطبر لعبادته هل تعلم له سميا الله سبحانه وتعالى says Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them so worship him and be patient in his worship worship him and be patient in his worship do you know of anything or anyone that is like him so we're commanded to be patient in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala patient in doing good deeds it's not easy to be patient when it comes to our relationships with others to be good to other people even when they're not good to you it's not easy to be patient throughout those things doing good deeds until like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says worship your Lord until certainty comes to you and the certainty here is the certainty of death that every single Muslim is going to have to go through worship your Lord until certainty comes to you so the first kind of patience that we need to develop inside of ourselves and train ourselves and train our souls and train our desires to be able to handle the first kind of patience is patience in doing good deeds the second kind of patience is the exact opposite of the first patience in avoiding sins there are so many sins there are so many ways that we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created that weakness inside of ourselves there are so many things there are so many kinds of desires that attack you in so many different ways and so many things that we do to sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things in our heart you know when we forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all those things in our heart those things on our tongue you know like backbiting and like lying and like slander and like saying things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't know those things in our actions like going somewhere haram or purchasing something haram or you know selling something haram or you know performing an action that is haram there are so many things and especially when we're living in the western world you know, subhanallah the, the the amount of things that come to you from every single angle from every single place this requires patience for you to avoid patience in avoiding falling into sin so you know you are every person is tempted by different things and from the best tips and the best tools that a muslim can use is to know the way that the shaitan gets to you to know the way that the shaitan gets inside of your head what are the things that you are particularly vulnerable to I'll give you an example there can be a Muslim who walks by a store selling alcohol and it never occurs to him to buy anything he's completely untouched by this kind of sin he, it doesn't even occur to him and even if he had the opportunity he wouldn't take it and there is another Muslim who because of a weakness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put inside of him he finds it difficult and he finds it's a test and a trial for him so there's no doubt that this second kind of Muslim in this situation he has to be patient upon avoiding that sin and it may be that the situation is reversed in another in another case maybe in terms of earning the haram the first person who wasn't tempted by the alcohol he's tempted when it comes to issues of earning and spending in haram so everybody needs to know how it is that the shaitan gets to you as an individual what kind of things you're vulnerable to as an individual look at yourself look at the sins that you commit and be honest about them and look at how the shaitan has influenced you and how your own soul has encouraged you towards these kinds of things when you've done that you'll be capable of being patient in avoiding those things which Allah has made haram so we're being patient in doing the good deeds and we're being patient in avoiding those things which are haram and there's no doubt that there is a particular key or a tool that we can use that is going to help us with these two kinds of patience the f and, and to be honest it's the same thing with regard to both of them and that is knowing the virtues of doing good deeds and knowing the punishments of committing sins so if you know about the virtues of doing good deeds we talked about the virtue of knowledge in a previous episode if you know about the virtue of doing good things 
it motivates you to be patient in doing those things. And if you know the punishments in doing something which is haram, something which is wrong, which is not allowed in Islam, then this allows you to be patient in avoiding those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram for you. And there is a third kind of patience. And this patience is probably what we think about when we talk about patience in general. And that is being patient upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for you. Because throughout your life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree for you many, many different situations. Some of them will be good in the sense that they will be easy for you and there will be situations where you feel very content and very happy. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree for you difficulties and problems. And again, like we heard in the hadith at the beginning of this episode, you have an opportunity to take advantage of both of those situations. And so you require a kind of patience, which is being patient upon the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that part of our Iman, a fundamental pillar of our faith in Islam, is that we believe in the predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good of it and the bad. So we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written everything that will happen until the day of judgment. We believe that nothing happens without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of every single thing, including us and our actions. When we have this belief, it gives us the ability to be patient upon the things that befall us. We know that whatever happens to us is by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can't change it. Whatever was going to befall us is going to befall us and whatever is going to miss us was always going to miss us. Therefore, we don't get exceptionally happy over those things that happen to us, nor do we get exceptionally sad and depressed. Instead, we realize that everything is an opportunity for us to be patient and an opportunity for us to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and an opportunity for us to do further good deeds and an opportunity for us to avoid falling into sin. And at the end of the day, these three kinds of patients, they come together and they act as a whole. So inshallah, in the next part of the episode, we're going to look at the other side of things. We're going to look at thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the many blessings that he gives us, those blessings that we can't possibly count and we can't possibly enumerate. And inshallah, we're going to see how those fit together, together with patience and being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Welcome back to Do Your Part. In the first part of this episode, we talked about the importance of being patient and the different types of patience. So we said that you have to be patient in doing good deeds and you have to be patient in avoiding falling into sins and you have to be patient in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees is going to happen during your life. And to remember that this life is really extremely short. In comparison to the hereafter, if you were to draw a single tiny dot representing the length of this life and a line that just kept on going and going and going and going to represent the hereafter. Of course, the line of the hereafter would never ever finish and this tiny, tiny dot would represent this life. So this life is incredibly short and we need to be patient. But this hadith that we talked about in the beginning, how amazing is the affair of the believer, the situation of a believer, and that this is only for the believer. We talked about if he is afflicted with a calamity, he's patient and Allah rewards him for that. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a blessing, then he thanks Allah, he's grateful to Allah, and Allah rewards him for that. So in the second half of this episode, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to be talking about gratitude. The first thing I think that we need to think about today in terms of gratitude is just how many blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in our lives. And it's impossible for us to even begin to encompass the number of blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, if you tried to enumerate, to count the blessings of Allah, you would not be able to do it. If you tried to count the blessings of Allah, you would not be able to do it. And Allah tells us in the Quran, فَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever blessings you have 
are from Allah. Think about yourself, your body, think about your heartbeat, think about your breathing, your eyesight, your hearing. Those are just a few tiny, tiny things that you can think about. Add on to others and others and others when you, you talk about, you know, the comfort of your life and your provision and your wealth and your health and your family and you get to the realization of the huge number of blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. And I think at the beginning as well, you have to say and you have to, to, to have this realization and this commitment that all of these blessings, they only come from Allah. How many people earn wealth? They earn, you know, a lot of money. They're very, very well off, very comfortable financially. And they believe that they did this of their own accord. They believe that they worked really, really hard and they strived and they struggled until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that wealth. But in reality, everything, every blessing that you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it doesn't matter, uh, you know, sort of what you've put into it. At the end of the day, if it wasn't for Allah, you would not have been able to achieve that blessing. And this is kind of an introduction to the topic of being thankful and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we are thankful and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each of these blessings, Allah gives us more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, if you are grateful, I will give you increase, I will increase you, I will give you more of those things and more and more and more. So one of the best ways to increase your provision is to be grateful for the provision that Allah has already given you. One of the best ways for you to increase, for example, the size of your family is for you to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the family that he's already given you and so on and so on and so on. So we have to realize that the blessings of Allah are more than we can count. We have to realize that these blessings only come from Allah and they don't come from anyone or anything else, especially not from our own efforts, which are simply a worldly cause. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate decider of which of those worldly efforts are successful and which of them are not successful. And thirdly, we understand that if we thank Allah and we are grateful towards Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase us in the rewards and in the bounties and the blessings that he gives us. So this is, these are important in terms of the introduction to the topic. Then we have to realize, and really this is the most important point when it comes to being grateful to Allah, that every single blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you has a means for you to be grateful to Allah for it. Let's take a few examples just to sort of clarify what it is that we're saying. Take for example the issue of your wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar razzaq the one who gives you provision after provision after provision. All of your provisions and all of your wealth and all of the richness that you have, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we show gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this wealth? By a number of things. By earning it in a means that is halal and by spending it in a means that is halal. By giving zakah on our wealth, by fulfilling the obligation that Allah has given us to give a share of that wealth to those who are left less fortunate. By giving sadaqah, by spending it on those things that Allah has obligated us to spend it upon, such as our family, our children, our wives and so on and so forth. Also, not only by spending it on, our, on those people who Allah is, has uh, made it obligatory uh, for us to spend it upon, but also for us to avoid spending it on those things that Allah has told us not to spend it upon, such as excess, you know, going beyond the bounds, purchasing things that have no benefit to them, no, no benefit to you, not in the dunya and not in the deen, not in this world and not in, in the religion and your religious life. So all of these are things that we have to do to be grateful to Allah for the wealth that He's given us. And of course we said, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, that if you are thankful and grateful to Allah, Allah will give you an increase. If we look at our children and we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us an increase in our children and to bless us in our children and to make them, you know, uh, to make them like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a pleasure to the eye. And, so, and all of these things we want, you know, them to achieve and we want them to think to achieve things in this world and in the next. Then if we want a blessing in these things, we have to thank Allah for what He's given us. 
We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has given us, the family that he's given us now. Our siblings, our parents, our existing children, whatever it may be. We need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those things, to fulfill our rights towards them. And when we fulfill our rights towards them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us an increase and will bless us with the ability to, for, for others to fulfill their rights towards us. You know, you look at, for example, how you treat your parents. How you treat your parents has a huge impact upon how your children treat you. And as much as you want for your, your children to treat you well, then you look at how you treat your parents. So these are all examples of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessings that he has given you. In reality, you have to also realize that you will never be able to thank Allah perfectly. Just like you will never be able to achieve absolute perfect patience that we talked about in the er earlier part of the episode. And gratitude or this patience and being thankful is not a situation where you're patient at one time and thankful at another. But in reality, you're constantly in a state of patience and constantly in a state of thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this again serves as a useful tool for us to reform our character that we ask ourselves in every situation, am I being patient? Am I being thankful? That's enough for this episode insha'Allah ta'ala and I leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until we meet again. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.